Someone commented on one of my videos recently inquiring as to whether or not I was okay and asking if I might be having a mental breakdown. And I thought that was a really touching example of how we can take care of each other as a society. Now, that's a very hard question to answer. Am I okay? Well, some days yes and some days no. And am I having a mental breakdown? Well, everyone's journey is so unique and so individual that it can be really difficult to compare notes in that way. You know, a lot of people are struggling nowadays with mental health, with emotional health, with spiritual health. And part of what it is that I suppose I'm trying to do on this channel is to illuminate some of these areas, some of the darker areas of uh, how we find ourselves trapped in depression or anxiety or trauma, PTSD, um, and beyond that, even just places of, I don't know what the heck is going on, where you don't even have a label for it. And in a, in a sense, we all do go through lots of smaller and larger breakdowns on a regular basis. And I think usually what's meant by the term mental breakdown is where we're accustomed to a certain level of functioning. Our mind works a particular way. Our thoughts are somewhat predictable and make sense with the world around us. Our emotions are, maybe they're a little bit topsy-turvy, but they're more or less in control. We're able to work. That's usually a good measure of whether or not you're healthy or having a breakdown is, are you overwhelmed enough that you can't work? You know, things like that can be brought on by acute life events, distress, loss, uh, injury, illness, those kinds of things. I've had my share of various different kinds of breakdowns in my life. Now, as to whether I'm having a breakdown right now, eh. <laughs> you know, if, if it is, then so be it. Um, it's a big one and it's gonna break down all the way to find out what is left when all of that is gone, you know? So usually, I guess the, the idea is if we're experiencing distress, crisis, breakdown, that we want to get through it and come out the other side and then be stronger and more stable and happier and so on and so forth. Now, that's the idea. And I'm doing something a little different than that, which is not exactly clear as to what it is. It does require sitting in a space of uncertainty, unknown, and my life fell apart and I don't know why it's falling apart and I can't figure out what's going on. And it's, you know, it definitely could look like that. It could look like a breakdown. Um, and it could partly be a breakdown. And embracing that and welcoming that. Saying, okay, well, let's just break down then. You know, break down and wake up the next morning and see what happens. And if we break down some more, then we break down some more and we keep going until, again, until we are sort of all broken down. And then what? You know, um, and there are lots of different systems that help people who are going through crises, you know, drug treatment and alcohol treatment centers and psychological professionals and health doctor professionals and, you know, rehab and whatever, you know, there's all kinds of different ways of recreating oneself, seminars, life coaching, and so on. And in my case, a long time ago, I just decided that whatever it is that I am, I want to be okay with it without some other framework or idea or system to 
hold me up or to give me context, but to just be okay with the bare bones version of whatever this experience is as the context without any socially constructed context, if that makes sense. Possibly a foolish, possibly impossible, possibly who knows, you know? You know, there's these two kind of different dimensions of self-actualization or realization or being becoming oneself. There's the psychological version of that, which is kind of the Western version, and there's the spiritual version of that. It's like the Eastern version. And those kind of came together back in the uh, 20th century. And what people found is that when they imported Eastern religions to the West, um, the mindsets were so different. The Western mindset was so individualistic and also so laden with psychological baggage and traumas and mental health issues and personal problems. And that was really what people would bring with them to meditation and to retreats and to ashrams and gurus and whatever, all that paradigm. And all of the Western folks would show up and say, okay, well, here's, I have all these problems, depression and my relationships and my work and all these things. And the meditation teachers would say, okay, well, that's not what I'm here. I'm supposed to be teaching you how to get in touch with your true self. And you're just coming to me with all these personal issues. Like, I, I'm not trained for this. This is like, you should talk to a therapist, right? And yet most therapists would really not have any clue about this spiritual dimension. And for anyone that's on that path of spiritual realization or whatever, that's like a very important foundation to what it is that you're, how you're evolving. This is pretty murky territory because it really depends on, there's a lot of different schools of thought in both religion and psychology. Some of them have similar aims. Some of them have different aims. At the end of the day, it's all about finding a sense of meaning in the world and a sense of happiness, sense of peacefulness in the world. Um, being oneself, right? So at the, at the core, yeah, it's all trying to achieve that same goal. I believe most of it is, but it can look very, very different on the way there. The paths are very different and, and, and everyone's unique individual path is different. So hard to talk. It's hard to speak in general terms about this, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like to answer the question, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. You know, some days I'm, great and just at peace with things even though things are just not how I want them to be at all not at all even though nothing seems to be going my way I'm still like okay I'm okay with this eh, sometimes I'm even happy with it uh, and then there are other days where I might wake up and say oh wow I really don't want to be here can I just end it now, <laughs> be done with this, you know? So it's like all the way up and all the way down, you know? Um, I overthink things a lot. I overanalyze things a lot. I have a pervasive background of self-hatred, you know? There's so much negative energy that was put into me, that was put into my system that it's been the work of a lifetime trying to maintain and to be myself within that. Say, hey, you know, I. Uh, what can you do when you're raised in a traumatic environment, when you're raised in an abusive environment? As a young child, all you can do is to take it in. You can't, you don't have the ability to say no. Um, so, you know, in some sense, I think from the psychological genre, if you want to call it that, from the therapeutic genre. One of the better terminologies that I have come across to describe this general theme is developmental trauma, otherwise known as complex PTSD. So 
In some ways it mirrors a breakdown, except it's more of a really long, slow, <laughs> chronic breakdown as opposed to a acute event where you have a crisis and things were okay, now suddenly they're really not okay and you're trying to get things back to being okay. Um, complex PTSD is like things have never been okay. And maybe if you're lucky, someday, decades later, you might find a way for things to be a little bit okay. And then if you're really lucky, maybe things will actually be great, is the hope. But that being said, um, not on a path here of trying to get better and not on a path of trying to improve my situation or anything like that. It's more uh, just dealing with what comes up. Just meeting things as they arise in the moment. You know, like, situation arises, you deal with the situation. And that's just it. Meeting it moment by moment. Not so much worrying about, am I doing it right? Or, you know, because the whole, for those of you who've been brought up as perfectionists, right? Everything that you ever did was wrong. Everything that you ever were was wrong and bad and not okay. So to meet the day and say, hey, you know what? Can I find a moment here where I'm okay? Where my existence is okay? Where anything, any thought that I have or feeling that I experience or action that I take is okay. And that's the work for me that so much harder than, than it would seem. Because though the programming is so deep down inside the body that it's not even accessible by thought, by thinking. You really have to get down to uh, the nervous system, the stomach, the brain, the neurons, not the thinking, not the thoughts, all that stuff is much more like secondary and tertiary to what's actually, um, oop, sorry. <laughs> That's a microphone, folks. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just talking about things that I don't even know about anyway, so perfect time to stop. It's like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm saying. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Am I having a breakdown? Maybe. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. No, no, I'm not. But you know what I mean? It's like all these things are just kind of little hats that we can put on and take off. It's like, well, how does this one fit? Oh, yeah, well, that's fine. Cool. All right. Put on this suit. All right. I see that. Yeah. They're all just suits. They're all just little disguises and different outfits that we can wear if we want to. It can be fun. Um, or it can suck. <laughs> I guess part of the key is that, can it also be both of those things? Fun and sucky at the same time. It's like, wow, this is horrible. Wow, I feel terrible. I'm, I'm in grief, I'm in pain, suffering, and I'm in joy. And I'm also in sensual contact with my own body, you know, without the judgments, without the thinking and talking on top of it all. So I remember a long time ago when I first had like non-dual experience. Boy, was that weird. <laughs> Back when there was no such word as non-duality and you couldn't look it up online or something. So you didn't know what the heck was going on. But I remember like seeing the world in terms of things that I used to think were opposites, like good and bad, but it was just good, bad, like just one word, good, bad. <laughs> and how all the different things that I thought were opposites were actually just the same thing. And that it was only just the mind that was making them into two different things. Pooh, that was a fun, fun realization. Um, but that is in, in fact more accurate to how things really are. And perceiving the world in that way or existing or living in that way gives us a better grounding in reality. And I think that helps to be able to actually attend to reality and not to just spin off into some mental craziness, you know.
Blah, 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 blah. Oh my gosh, I'm ready for bed. Give it another hour. It's only eight o'clock. All right, we got to stay up till nine. La, 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 la. Anyway. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Here we are. It's May 31st, 2024. Coming at you live. Coming at you live.